Welcome to Blackboard Discussion on Monopoly number five. Now remember, last time we were talking what was bad about a monopoly. One thing was that it was not production efficient, it wasn't at minimum average total cost, and it was not allocation efficient. As a matter of fact, if you draw a monopoly di diagram like this, price, quantity, demand, and the marginal revenue line, remember that one, it's halfway, so I'm going to just draw it something like that and put marginal revenue. We see something going on here, and we got to figure out, oh, that's right, marginal cost like this. And then the average total cost is, let's put it in kind of a light blue, average total cost like this. And we found out that when marginal revenue equals marginal cost here, they produce all the way out to here, we'll say that's a 25. They don't produce out to here. Where marginal benefit equals marginal cost, and we drew that triangle here, and the problems with that triangle in terms of efficiency. So what happens? They're actually under allocating resources. The pure, pure free market model says something like, oh, I don't know, 48 units should be produced. Marginal benefit equals marginal cost. But they don't. They under allocate resources. Uh, that's what's bad about a monopoly, this kind of triangle area here. Now, why might monopolies exist? Well, when we first discussed monopolies, we talked about network externalities. That's a good thing. We all use the same computer software. Uh, we can all talk to each other. We all benefit. A network externality can be a positive thing. Perhaps that outweighs this welfare loss triangle. What else is good about having a monopoly? Well, it turns out that they could have economies of scale going on here that are beneficial to society. For example, up here in this corner, look at this. What if a small firm has an average total cost curve like that? In other words, they can produce little amounts, say 20 units, at a minimum average total cost like this. Pure competition, we think to ourselves, well, let's have that pure competition since their average total cost would be at a minimum that we'd have production efficiency, not a monopoly. That would be terrible. They would be way up here, and you know, just like the C average total cost is up here, not down at the minimum. So we definitely want to have a, wait a minute, but what if a, Monopoly has economies of scale, and their average total cost looks like that. So the average total cost of a monopoly or a big firm is way over here. And even though it's not at its minimum, it's up here somewhere, it's still below a small firm or in a perfectly competitive market, a firm like this. Economies of scale might end up being actually good for society. There's those two things. Here's another one. Something about research and development. Some people argue that if you allow mon monopolies to have this kind of profit area here, it's maybe more likely they will invest in research and development. Though economists say, you know, if you've got a monopoly already, there's not much incentive to develop new technologies. You're making profits. Things are good. But then other economists point out that, yeah, but there's an incentive to invest in technology, and advancement because you will get a patent on a product perhaps and reap this profit. So monopoly profits are attractive. You do some research and development and that is called innovation. And perhaps we wouldn't have all the things we have like, oh, I don't know, an iPhone and things like this that you can patent and license. And we wouldn't gather those things because there was no incentive. So I think maybe we'll just leave it there. We'll say, look, Sometimes monopolies are natural and you get some natural network externalities that benefit society. Sometimes monopolies are big so they can produce things cheaper. That's this diagram up here somewhere where you can see that a big company has a lower average total cost and that might benefit society. And then there's some kind of possibility that monopolies will invest in research and development. They'll innovate because they want to make these monopoly profits like this. So do these outweigh the bad things? Well, there aren't any real pure monopolies. That's the weird thing about these market structures. There aren't any real pure, perfect competitive markets either. So what happens is 
we kind of use these as models to think about the world. It kind of depends on where you define the market. If I put mousetrap up here and I say, well, that's my monopoly because I have a patent on a particular mousetrap. Well, you know, I may have a patent and monopoly on mousetraps, but do I have a monopoly on trapping mice? No. You could use all sorts of different methods. You could use just, oh, I don't know, a little cage with some cheese in it. Not my fancy mouse trap that has a little color TV and fancy cheese and they run in there or something like that, you know. So it depends on how you define the market. Maybe it's pure competition to mouse traps because, well, you could use a variety of methods and there are lots of competitors. So when we move on past monopoly, we're going to talk about all of these things in between pure competition and monopoly. But that's for later. For now, we're just focusing on this monopoly. Now, remember, monopolies could have losses. That would occur if their average total cost was way up here. You think about that, that's going to definitely be on the test. You're going to have this profit definitely on the test. But the main thing to think about is why is a monopoly bad? Because of this stuff. Why might a monopoly be good? Because of this stuff. That's definitely going to be on the test. Okay, see you there. Bye. Thanks for looking at all these.